this here is a real frame and this here is a generated frame and if I move back and forth between the real and the generated you can see how all the branches duplicate and blur out but not everything like some like these branches here remain the same meanwhile this rock face here is almost standing still while the rest of the image is moving and that is why I'm explaining what I see the way I am Today I wanted to come back to AMD Fluid Motion Frame and check it out on Lords of the Fallen. Apparently AMD Fluid Motion Frame has been updated uh, to increase the image quality since I last checked it out. So that's kind of why I wanted to do this. I've heard comments that uh, it's improved quite a bit. And it also states that here in the Tech Preview Driver page, which I will have linked in the description if you want to try it. And it does state that now you can use it with HDR, which is really nice. And it also says that improvements to frame pacing has been made, resulting in overall smoother gameplay experience and improved image quality. So I'm going to give my thoughts on what it looks like in Lords of the Fallen. And we're going to record it at 120 frames so that we can slow it down and examine it. And we'll see what it looks like. So let's jump into the game. Okay, now that we're into the game, what we're going to do is we're going to go over our settings. So we're playing the game at 4K. We're not using any FSR. And we've set our graphical preset to high. So what this is going to allow us to do is to get around 60 frames per second of real frames. And then we're going to turn on fluid motion frames, which should double our frame rate. So we should be around 100 to 120 frames per second. And in case you haven't seen any of my videos before, the only way we can see the, gener the total amount of frames, including the generated frames, is with the AMD metrics overlay, which will be at the bottom. So right now, fluid motion frame is not enabled. But I just wanted to go over the settings that we're using for the AFMF footage, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to tweak the settings so I can get 100 to 120 real frame rate. So we're going to lower some of our graphical settings. That way we can compare whether it's worth turning AMD fluid motion frames on or if it's a better idea just to tweak the settings so that we can get 120 real frames. That's kind of the point of this. It's more uh, image quality focused because that's kind of the biggest downside of fluid motion frame. I will show you the settings that I'll be using for the 120 real frames right now. So these will be our settings here. So 4K, but this time we're going to be using FSR quality. And we've basically put global illuminations, reflection, shadows, and view distance to medium from high. So those are the only differences. And yeah, that's the tweaks that you got to make to get essentially double your frame rate in this game and you don't really lose much visual quality as you guys will be able to see because we will be comparing it side by side so why don't we jump into fluid motion frame first and we'll do the quick panning around and see what it looks like and I will be talking about exactly what I see because I am not a hundred percent sure how the footage is going to be captured through the driver Right? I don't know if it's going to be portrayed exactly the way I see it. So I will, be, I will be saying exactly what I see and what I think at the same time. So let's jump on fluid motion frame right now and then we'll compare it to 120 real frames. Okay, so we're going to begin with the panning of the camera around. This is a very good way to check for motion fluidity and image quality and how smooth everything looks and feels. And uh, right away... I can tell that there's almost like a smearing of Vaseline, but not evenly spread out on the screen. It's kind of difficult to explain. Uh, basically, if you look at those sticks over there, um, it, it's like every time I move the camera, it's like there's like a, a layer of blur applied on top of them. And it moves as I spin this around. Now, the flame and stuff, that does not really get blurry. But on top of that, there is quite a bit of jitter every time I move and look around, uh, every time I pan the camera. For example, where you see those butterflies where the vestiges um, over there in front of me, essentially it's like almost like a cloud of blur right there, which I think it's probably the, fo the foliage, 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 um, you know, it's having trouble generating the frames and it's losing some of that detail so I think that's what's happening there 
but basically you can also see a bit of jitter and almost like some of these more complex fine line geometry assets are it, it almost feels like they're updating at a lower frame rate it's almost like they're twitching as you pan the camera around it's kind of difficult to explain really but it does add blur uh, noticeable yeah we can uh, we can now jump on uh, see an actual 120 frames Okay, so now I've tweaked the settings so that we can get around a hundred of real frames. And as you can see, the AMD overlay corresponds with our Riva Tuna statistics server on the top. So, and immediately, this looks so much better than having fluid motion frames on. And it actually feels smoother and more consistent too. There's no blurring or that smearing of Vaseline that I was talking about earlier. There is no jittering of uh, these like more complex thin line geometry assets on the screen that before were almost like um, like doubling or it, they look like they weren't being updated at a high frame rate compared to the rest of the image. Kind of hard to explain, but yeah, this feels so much better. I would totally rather play the game like this then have everything set to high without any FSR on an fluid motion frame. We'll look at this side by side, slow down to 50% so you guys can see it for yourselves as well. And I will disable the metrics overlay so you can see a clean image. Well, on the left, we have our fluid motion frame on and on the right, we have 110-ish real frames with the lowered settings now you can already see that the right looks much smoother whereas the left it's almost like it's skipping and hitching and doubling and blurring now i will show you guys on my editing software we're gonna go through frame by frame so that you can see exactly what i mean by when i say that the fine line geometry looks like it's blurred while parts of the image look okay and you're gonna see exactly why that is so let's jump on there again fluid motion is on the left and 100% real frames is on the right this is a real frame right now and then we move forward one we get a generated frame you can see this because all these bundle of uh, wood here and some of this writing is duplicated you see that we have one, two, three, four lines here on the on the rock face, and then that's duplicated. So are these sticks here. They're duplicated as well. And so is the grass. It's all blurred out and smudged out. But you'll notice that parts of the image is not. Like up here, some of this writing almost remains the same. And then this is almost like the image is separating here. This rock is standing still. So all these things add up to the point where that is what I'm seeing. I mean, I hadn't actually looked at this in detail like this. It just sort of popped out while I was editing. So I figured we'd take a look at it together. And that is why um, I personally, I would not use fluid motion frame because I think it just destroys the image quality to the point where I just don't really see benefit for it personally because I could just lower the settings and get 120 real frames here instead of 60 real ones and 60 generated ones. And yes, this is a little bit softer, the image here, because we're using FSR and we've lowered some of the graphical settings, although not much. But you can tell that the image quality difference is not is not really all that noticeable. If I go back and forth in slow motion like this, you can see that like jitter out, glitch out. And these things always pop out. You can see it up there, especially. Same thing here with the with the grass, because it's so... Uh, so fine and so much of it that it just looks like it's just standing still while the image around it is moving. So I don't know. I hope this kind of uh, shows you guys what I'm talking about and what I am explaining. Anyway, we'll get back to the video and we'll check out some combat now. Okay, so now we're going to jump into some combat with fluid motion frame. And then we're going to just play through this little area here, kill some ads, and I'll say, I'll talk about how I, how it feels and uh, what the visuals look like. Now, immediately off the bat, 
I don't really notice the imperfections, the blurring I was talking about, and the jittering of some, uh, ge uh, uh, you know, finer geometry assets. The reason why is because I'm focused on looking at my character and the enemy, uh, but I do get, it does, it does um, show up the... You know, the, the blurring does show up whenever you pan the camera around. It's there, of course. Uh, but it's not as noticeable as when you pan in the camera around, obviously. So, this actually doesn't feel too bad. But, it, I mean, it doesn't feel like we're getting 100 frames. Uh, from, a, from a combat perspective, the way, how responsive it is. You know, when I hit the button and when the swing comes out, it doesn't feel as responsive even though from a motion fluidity perspective yeah the, the motion is fluid on the screen now we're running at 106 to 110 real frames per second and you can see this by the met amd metrics overlay corresponding with the reva tuner statistics on top yeah i can immediately tell right off the bat that it feels much smoother i mean it it feels like going from Kind of like going from like 60 to 120. Like the, you know, when you press the button and your character swings, basically it's more responsive. The way the entire image and combat moves and looks, it's it's more fluid, more consistent. Um, I would definitely choose this way to play than use fluid motion frame. And since I don't have... A, like a 240 hertz display, I wouldn't really benefit of using fluid motion frame with this amount of base frame rate anyway. So yeah, this looks uh, totally smoother to me, much smoother. Why don't we go and look at some side by side, slow down to 50% for you guys. Like I mentioned in my previous clip, when you're actually playing and fighting, you don't really notice the um, image issues because you're so focused on one part of the screen, the enemies and what you're doing and everything like that. But when you're taking turns, moving the camera, running around, jumping into places and that sort of thing, panning the camera, it definitely, the issues definitely stand out. And uh, for me personally, I think it just, uh, uh, it just ruins the image quality. Um, it's just like kind of reminds me of like the old school DLSS when it first came out or even like early variations of DLSS 2. Um, I just, I personally wouldn't use it. Uh, I would use FSR 3 frame generation, DLSS 3 frame generation. They work pretty well. Uh, from what I've tested with FSR 3, it's been limited because it's only in a couple games. I've tested DLSS 3 a lot. It works really, really well. And I also like the fact that you can cap your frame rate with, uh, at least with DLSS 3. I'm not so sure about FSR 3. I haven't looked into that yet. But anyways, well, that's my final thoughts is that AFMF still needs quite a bit more work. And I have heard some people say that it looks great. The image looks perfect. They can't even notice that it's on. And personally, I must be doing something wrong because I don't see how you can't notice that. Uh, I, I mean, I've shown... Uh, how the image is affected and this sort of behavior is consistent as a matter of fact i'll be looking at miles morales next uh, i do want to take a look at that game because i did a couple get a couple of requests and i'm also curious about it so i will be looking into that but if you guys did like this video leave me a like and if you want to see more of this type of content consider subscribing if you want to and i really love hearing you guys' thoughts comments and suggestions because i want to learn more about this sort of thing and engage with you guys and if you have any suggestions i would like to look into them like someone recommended looking into the resolution scaling in this game because it worked pretty good for them so i might do that but anyways i hope you'll have a great weekend